you're looking at what may be the oldest breed of lapdog. In fact, the Maltese is one of the oldest breeds, period. A Maltese also happens to be the richest dog in the world. Meet Trouble, who inherited a $12 million fortune from hotel mogul Leona Helmsley. From Marie Antoinette to Elizabeth Taylor, this has been the dog of choice for centuries of glitterati. One of the oldest of the European toy breeds, the Maltese has been revered by the ancient Greeks. They've been depicted in paintings and literature and pottery. Aristotle called this dog a cloud floating in the sky. And there's evidence that ancient Egyptians worshiped the Maltese. It's believed that the breed originated on the island that it's named for, Malta. They were bred down from dogs that were working dogs. I think most of that sort of working and hunting ability was bred out of them. <laughs> so what is it that makes us want to pamper this dog with luxury? The Maltese is probably one of the most perfect um, companion dogs. They look really soft and supple, and you just want to touch them, play with them. Dark, round eyes and a cute black button nose amp up the cute factor in this dog. They are obviously all white, which is one of the things I think people find most charming. Roman emperors supposedly bred out all colors but white in the Maltese. White was sacred to the Romans. Like poodles, the coat is hair, not fur. Hair sheds less than fur and is better for people with allergies. And they're actually great pets to carry with you. A lot of people like to carry them in bags and take them on trips with them. Why don't we put a pillow under her? The hallmark of the Maltese is its small size, but that small package provides a lot of love and affection. I have a special soft spot in my heart for them because I had a Maltese for 17 years. She was my best friend, my buddy, my companion, and there's no dog that'll ever live up to the memory of a Maltese for me. The breed does well in many environments. If you're somebody who wants a dog who's going to go hiking with you or on long walks, while Maltese can be very athletic, keep in mind that for every step you take, they're probably taking five to ten steps. This breed is smart, but beware of pampering it too much as a puppy. These dogs tend to become overly dependent on their owners. It's very important to train them that it's okay to be alone if you want to be able to leave the house without them causing a problem with your neighbors. When it comes to grooming, the long-haired Maltese is not a cheap date. The long coat requires a tremendous amount of grooming. If you want to keep a Maltese in the show coat with the hair all the way grown to the ground, it requires daily brushing and weekly bathing. Maltese are generally healthy dogs. So Maltese are pretty hardy. They don't have a lot of diseases that they can get. One condition that a lot of them get, though, is dental disease. You want to make sure that you can brush their teeth regularly about three times to seven times a week. Maltese have great temperaments, but families with small children should be wary of getting a Maltese. They are physically uh, more frail than a lot of other dogs. If you have children and you carefully supervise them, then it might be appropriate. <laughs> So in general, Maltese are very adaptable dogs. They're considered healthy, but are prone to dental problems and need their teeth brushed several times a week. They require a lot of grooming, especially if you want to keep them in show coat. These dogs are usually easy to train, but start early and don't pamper them too much when they're young. The Maltese is not recommended for families with small children, but for pure companionship, the Maltese is second to none.